what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel today we finally get to take a look at uh, sims latest 125 cc offering the sim adx 125 released this year in europe this summer and uh, it's an interesting machine it's a top of the range for the 125 cc class excluding the cruise sim and the joy max 125s but those are maxi scooters with smaller engines to adhere to certain legislation but in terms of its normal small size uh, 125 cc's this is the absolute top of the range and today as usual and finally after uh, waiting for it for about 18 months we are going to take a look at it from front wheel to back wheel as we usually do so let's get straight into it now up front we've got a smallish windscreen but uh, it takes the wind off your chest when you're riding uh, I don't know outside the city on a highway on a bit of a trip uh, we've got this interesting aggressive style design and this wide front fairing it's not wider than the handlebars but it really gives the scooter a certain stance full LED lights high and low beams and daytime running lights also full LED turn signal indicators these are solidly mounted, so not the rubber style of uh, indicators that usually flop around. We've got front a normal front suspension, front fork, but we do have these protectors to protect the fork seals from any kind of dust or mud or anything that could get into it and into them and damage them. This is very important because this scooter is uh, supposed to be like an adventure scooter, a scooter that you can take on long trips and that you can off-road with that's why on the 13 inch aluminum rims you do have let's not get it off the center stand a pair both front and rear of kenda mixed tires these are adventure tires off-road dish tires but they do have pretty decent knobs and uh, they will grip in the dirt and in the mud because uh, i have tried them and they work pretty well in terms of braking we have a single 260 millimeter brake disc up front with a regular dual piston caliper moving around to the side we have our floorboards where we, we can uh, keep our legs we, we have two different positions one is here one is here there is plenty of leg room for even the tallest of riders uh, the handlebar is quite raised compared to other 125cc scooters it's pretty high and it's also pretty wide we have your passenger foot pegs right here, metal. We have your 125cc liquid cooled engine with about 12 horsepower and 11 newton meters of torque. We have normal exhaust but with a chromed accent uh, as a heat guard. Your seat which is split into two in a style that it gives the rider a lot of comfort because it's so much it's a lot of padding right here and also the shape of it gives you a bit of a nice backrest uh, for the passenger uh, the passenger will be here for short trips not long trips also he can grab on or she can grab on to these grab handles right here which are really solidly mounted to the scooter moving around to the back we see our led tail light and led brake lights we also do have led turn signal indicators in the back they are the same solidly mounted our license plate light right here the same 13 inch wheel but with a bit of a wider tire on the back with also the same kenda off-road style tires we do have a lot of plastics here protecting all of the electronics from mud from dirt from water again this is in keeping with the adventure theme of the scooter and uh, these actually do help as i found out this weekend these actually do help to keep the mud off of any kind of exposed wires or anything actually this is the first scooter from sim where i see that this area has absolutely no exposed wires even the shroud for the radiator has a bit of a plastic cover for the cap where you fill the radiator with uh, cooling with cooling liquid also we can see in here the rear suspension which is a mono shock and uh, the rear wheel is mounted on a single-sided swing arm now what this helps in putting the rear shock here 
is that with a, with very little with very little shock travel or suspension travel you can actually get a lot of travel to the wheel so in this setup you can have like five centimeters of travel for the shock it equates to about 10 centimeters of travel to the wheel that gives you in a small room a lot of suspension travel travel which makes the scooter a lot more comfortable and a lot better on the bumps in terms of rear braking we have a 230 millimeter brake disc in the back with a single piston caliper now your under seat storage is pretty decent for a scooter of this size now, it's not extremely big but as you can see you can it's actually pretty wide and pretty long it's not too deep so people always ask me can i fit a full-size helmet or helmet this helmet that this storage space i don't know i never put helmets under my seat i either grab it onto here and then close the seat or just take the helmet with me because this space is for storage of all kind of other things like shopping like a, a bottle of water like some tools when you're going on a long trip or maybe i don't know whatever else you can think of but helmets i never put helmets in here if you have something like a small open face helmet then yes it's probably gonna fit but if you have like a full face modular helmet then no it's probably not gonna fit also another thing i really really like is the fact that you have the battery here and if you want to attach some cables for a battery tender instead of trying to push them out through the side or maybe punch a hole in your battery cover you actually have a slot here where you can put cables through so you can have cables attached to your battery that come out through here and you can have your battery tender connection right here without having to modify anything to your scooter in terms of handlebar controls we have our hazard light switch right here so we can turn on the hazards we have our uh, switch for the engine start stop feature you can either have it on or completely off this is real nice because if you don't like the feature just put it to off it will always be off no matter how many times you, re you restart your scooter our power switch to turn it on this quad lock mount which i mounted myself this is what i use in case everybody is asking what kind of phone mount do i use quad lock always all the time we have our horn right here we have our third signal indicators our high and low beam and right here for our finger we have our passing light to flash the brights now the key situation is one that i really really like we have our this is one of sims regular keyless systems but it's actually the keyless 2.0 what that means is when i come up to the scooter and it's locked let's say turned off it's locked no longer like on the previous system did i have do i have to press the unlock button so i can use this no i just come up to the scooter keys in my pocket i just press here it activates and then i can turn it on so the key just stays in my pocket forever i never have to pull it out but what happens when the battery of the key fob uh, drains and we're out of battery what happens if i don't know the antenna here breaks down and no longer sees the key how will i start my scooter well you pull let's see if i can show you guys we have a tab right here so we press on it and then we pull a key out and then we open this and then we stick our key right in and we can turn it off turn it on and we can start the scooter and be on on, on our merry way also right next to it we have a usb plug which is compatible with quick charge 3.0 on the left hand side of the scooter we have a nice little cubby hole uh, not lockable it's pretty decently sized to uh, decently dip it will fit a full-size phone and it's watertight so that's all i can say about it it's a nice little cubby hole very useful you can fit a few things in here like your wallet a phone but do remember it's not lockable in terms of dashboard we have a full color tft dash it's about five inches in size 
we have our idiot lights right here we have we have our mode and set button indicated on the dash we have our ref counter our speed our fuel gauge our water temperature gauge our total kilometers and we can change to trip meter oil meter and also traction control system on and off and also if we hold oh we have a clock and we have indicators here for uh, uh, if the side stand is down or if the start stop feature is active and working if the engine stops at a traffic light if we hold the s button down we go into the menu we have our modes which gives us three different dash layouts also we have our time indicator who we'll set the time set the units as in metric or imperial set the language and this is about is software info of this certain dash press long on m and we're back in the normal dashboard in terms of idiot lights we have our left and right indicators we have our traction control system our abs our, our oil check light our high beam our water temperature warning light and our fuel light one of the most interesting features of this scooter is located right here and we can access it through the key and it's the fuel tank you know why because this fuel tank is 15 liters big and with a 125 cc engine that gives you a lot of range how much range well i'm gonna put a list here of a couple of bikes big adventure bikes big globetrotter world conquering adventure bike and we will see how the adx compares i have my little cheat sheet here so we have in first place the the bmw r 1250 gs adventure the one with the 30 liter fuel tank which has about 568 kilometers of range the t the yamaha t7 world raid which has 546 kilometers the Africa Twin Adventure Sports 517, my own personal R1100 GS with a 25 liter fuel tank 445, NT1100 from Honda 427, the Mighty Goldwing 414, and the list keeps going down and down and down from that. Now, these are numbers I got off of Spritz Monitor, which is a website where people can uh, put in their fuel consumption from tank to tank and it calculates the exact fuel consu consumption because you go from full tank to full tank and you put in your odometer i took the average for each model and then compared it to the fuel size this i calculated its fuel consumption at 2.76 liters per 100 kilometers how i took it on a trip this weekend and that's the fuel consumption i got which would give the ADX with its 15 liter fuel tank a fuel range, a real life fuel range of 543 kilometers. That's right below the GS Adventure. So the only bike to top it is the GS Adventure. But if we go with the stated fuel consumption, which you can achieve because this is a brand new unit, it's, it was in its break-in period, if you go with the normal fuel consumption that sim declares the 2.6 and i know this engine can do 2.6 liters per 100 kilometers you get a fuel range of over 576 kilometers that would make it just about top of the chart for fuel range in the two-wheel world in terms of rider comfort let's get on it let's show you a little bit the seat is about 810 millimeters tall. It's pretty tall, but it's not very wide. So uh, me at 175 centimeters tall, I can reach the ground properly. Uh, the scooter is about 150 kilograms in weight, but weight is down low, fuel tank is low. It currently has a full tank of gas and it's quite easy to maneuver. In terms of comfort, you can easily find yourself a decently comfortable riding position for long stints in the saddle the handlebars are higher than usual for scooters um, they're wider than usual for scooters this makes it excellent for long distance road trips we have a lot of leg room to stretch out we have passenger foot pegs to put our feet right here or in our normal position the seat is nice and sculpted and gives us decent back support 
it might be a small little scooter but it's actually very very comfortable and it's uh, quite interesting because it, it looks like an adventure scooter but somehow it also kind of is so let's get out on the road and see exactly how it rides and what's what with this machine come on <laughs> Finally, we have the ADX 125 in a full review on the channel. Now, I, this isn't my first time riding it. I've put the video up of, of my first time. And currently, this unit I have is fully broken in with 493 kilometers on the clock. Oil change is done and everything. And uh, we get to try it out because... I'm, I've actually gotten quite acquainted with it because this weekend I took it on a bit of a road trip uh, to a motorcycle event here in Romania and uh, said road trip was about 490 kilometers and uh, it, imp it included highways, normal roads dirt roads forest roads off-roading mud everything i threw everything at it and now we can talk what i learned well, that's a little bit too warm anyway as i was saying first of all we're gonna start off with city riding a lot of people are curious how does this this thing handle the city well it's on 13 inch wheels so that makes it extremely flickable and easy to throw from side to side the fact that they are one inch bigger than the 12s that usually come on scooters or more or small city vehicles makes it just that little bit more stable at high speeds or when you put it into a bend but they're still 13s so you can still easily throw it from side to side and the scooter is still decently light at 150 kilograms so it's unintimidating it's still decently small although we have the handlebars a little bit wider than normal 125s they're still manageable through city traffic it's a good commuter the comfortable riding position makes it for a pleasant ride through the city the suspension soaks up the bumps nicely the engine has decent pickup but you do have to remember it's still a 125 cc engine pushing a 150 kilogram scooter so uh, it's gonna struggle just a little bit in some asian markets you do have this scooter in 150 cc variant with 15 horsepower instead of the 12 we have here i think that would be a better fit for it but here in europe we have to make do with the 125 cc because of regulations and uh, yeah, it's a long story but being 125 that means a lot more people can use it can ride it and can enjoy it now let's see can we find an opening now come on push 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 See, it has decent pickup. It's in just about in the realm of a regular 125. If you want something uh, just a little bit faster, then I would say from Sims lineup something like a Fiddle or a Jet 14, because those are quite a little bit lighter and still have just about the same power. Now, with the engine at full operating temperature, we should stop here at the light and the engine should shut off. There it goes. The engine has shut off. It has a bit of a delay, about half a second of delay, but it turns on really quickly. As you can see, the start-stop light is flashing. We're going to look at the green light, and as soon as the light turns green, I'm going to go wide open throttle. That's the worst case scenario for this kind of system. We'll see if the engine box down, if the scooter hicks up, but going from engine off to wide open throttle, that's the worst case scenario for something like this and yep it did it what was that like a full second before we actually left but what i have learned is that 
if you take it a little bit easier and if you know your traffic lights you can turn the engine on just before the light turns green and then the engine handles it the system handles everything a lot better once you get used to it it's actually quite a nice system to use quite easy to use in my time spent with it i actually found it quite enjoyable to let the engine turn off at traffic lights because it's it makes it quieter there are no vibration when the engine is off so it's actually quite pleasant to have the engine off every now and then let's close the visor because we will attempt to catch the green light and uh, bugs are starting to get into my eyes <laughs> and i kind of like to see where i'm going there we see the beautiful handling changing lanes one side flick to the other it has umph it just doesn't have as much as it is capable of having you can feel that the brakes and the chassis can take a lot more speaking of brakes the single brake disc up front is adequately sized there's decent brake feel from the front and from the back and when you use both brakes with the included abs it actually stops remarkably quickly and also if you're very heavy on the throttle you're still safe because you do have traction control quickly change lanes we have traction control that uh, will take care of us in case of an event but the next thing i want to see and i want to try out and i want to test out is how does this scooter handle the wide open road because with over 500 kilometers of range and a comfortable seating position we have to try out the high speed highway cruising capabilities of this little machine like i was saying we do have to test out the long distance capabilities of this machine because although 99 percent of people are going to use this in the city because it's a city scooter it's perfect in the city if you want to use it in the city fine by me it's a very good city vehicle the softer suspension that's made for off-road uh, is very comfortable on the bumps the scooter is nicely balanced the engine is powerful enough it's a perfect city it's a perfect city scooter there's a lot of underseat storage for its size you can put a top case on the back you have a bit of a windshield here but this this we're going to talk about on the highway again bugs getting into my eyes but in the world of two-wheel vehicles there are a few riders me included that uh, some people call masochists some people call crazy we like to take out 125 cc vehicles and cross continents with them why i don't know maybe because we're crazy maybe because it's nice having such a light little vehicle to maneuver maybe because we like the challenge and the triumphant feeling when you actually reach your destination 5,000 kilometers away on a little 125 cc scooter with just 12 horsepower and for that for that somebody at sim i think for us knuckleheads that like to tour on 125s we have a brethren at sim because this machine was modified from a normal 125cc scooter to become one of the best touring 125cc machines out there why 15 liter fuel tank we have over 500 kilometers of range this windshield is perfectly shaped to take the wind off most of your chest the fairing that's designed to be nice in front of you takes the wind off your legs and also the transmission is set up that the thing will cruise at 100 kilometers an hour at 7,000 rpm normal 125cc scooters at 100 kilometers an hour are turning about 8,000 2,500 rpm this thing 100 we're doing just a bit over 7,000 and if we push it let's do a top speed run we're gonna go up this bridge and then we're gonna come back down it 
Let's see how fast this thing goes with just 12 horsepower. Let's get ourselves small and aerodynamic. 1.9, 108, 109 up the hill, but just to wait for the downhill. Let's see if we can reach speeds of over 110 and what RPM are we turning at those speeds. Here comes the downhill. Hold on, everybody. 109, change lanes. 110, at 112, at 112 kilometers an hour, we're turning 8,000 RPM. But you don't have to max it out. Although this engine was designed to run at full throttle all day long. That means we can cruise like this all day long at 108, 109, we're on the flat now. That's what it's capable of. And you can see just how stable it is. A small little city scooter doing 108 and it's perfectly stable, I'm one-handed. You know what, take hands off the handlebars. Perfectly stable, no problem. This was made for touring. It actually has a very, very good touring potential. You are extremely comfortable on the seat. You can easily maintain speeds of over 100 kilometers an hour. The engine is comfortable at these speeds. The fuel consumption is low at these speeds because it's turning less RPM. So if you're one of those knuckleheads like myself that are thinking of adventures to do on a 125cc machine and you don't know which 125cc machine to buy and go on those adventures, this thing is just about the only thing on the market that's properly made for long distance touring on a 125cc machine. But the ADX still has one more trick up its sleeve and that is its off-road capabilities. So let me go find a bit of off-road and we'll talk about its off-road capabilities. Now before we reach the off-road part I'm gonna use the off-ramp to show just how stable this bloody thing is. It's an absolute peach in the corners weight is down low and you can really chuck it into a bend really get after it and once your way is blocked by a slow moving car you can use the excellent brakes but yeah while i was riding it in this weekend on the mountain road it's real nice on uh, back roads on switchbacks on really curvy roads because it's so easy to flick from side to side. It's so positive on turning and it holds its line. Uh, the, that's what the 13 inch wheels will do for you. Usually people say uh, small wheels are not stable. Well, this is very, very stable to be perfectly honest. And uh, also what, what people say is that small wheels are not good for the bumps. Well, I have ridden it off-road, you're gonna see in my next video where it's gonna be the full trip, it's gonna be a very long video as I usually make my trips. But for now we're just gonna find a bit of decent little off-road so I can show you guys a couple of things. Back on the highway to head back into the city because I think I know a spot where we can find a little bit of off-road. But as you saw back there, it's so easy and positive to put in the bends. Now we're accelerating once again to highway speeds. Let's find that bit of the road because highway it can do beautifully. <laughs> Top speed run. I think I saw 120 for a moment. There it is, cruising at 115 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Come on, let's not kill it. 105, 106 is perfectly comfortable for it. That's beautiful. A little 125cc that can cruise at 105 kilometers an hour. That's absolutely gorgeous. It's, out, it's awesome. Now, as far as I know, we should be able to find a bit of off-roading here. Yes, we are. So, let me just open this up so I don't heat up. Let's take it a little bit of off-road on the gravel. 
first thing you notice when you take this thing off-road is the white handlebars really help you control the machine we can either go fast or we can go really slow on the technical stuff the engine has decent pickup decent torque like I said we can either go fast or slow the balance is there and the handling at speed is there the ABS is normal ABS it doesn't have off-road ABS careful you don't bottom out that's the only thing it does have about 12 centimeters of ground clearance but you might actually bottom it out sometimes but here on the whoop de doos is actually decently comfortable for a scooter with 13 inch wheels it should not be this good this comfy this well equipped for stuff like this and actually let's get into some gnarly stuff let's see what we can find over here come on up the hill you go <laughs> I don't know what's supposed to be here, but it's really, really awesome. Surprisingly, it can do it. And like I've said, the suspension handles the bumps a lot better than it has any right to do with 13 inch wheels. I can take a lot of liberties with it. And also the stock tires it comes with, these Kendas, they grip they grip on tarmac they grip here they bloody well grip and that's kind of amazing for stock tires usually bikes don't come with decent stock tires at least cheaper motorcycles because this thing at around 4,000 euros is not that expensive oh yeah and another thing that you notice when uh, you ride it off-road is the fact that the plastics are not rattling we can do whatever the hell we want with it and the plastics do not rattle jump it hit bumps they're not rattling sim has gone to the effort of really tying the plastics down well so they don't rattle and i'm pushing it around here and they are not rattling one bit <laughs> who said you couldn't have fun with a little 125cc scooter off-road this thing actually feels like it was made for this should we try a hill climb yeah why not that's pretty steep i know on camera it doesn't look steep but we're just gonna go for it come on oh light on the front end front wheel came up just as we were cresting it's amazing how capable this thing is. Now, normally I wouldn't test out off-road abilities and put it in the review, but considering Sim's own marketing for this machine is uh, showing a rider going one day through the city and the next day through a desert, I gotta test it out, right? I mean, what's down here? Whoa! Can it do it? That's basically straight down. Oh, start stop feature. And then we can come up there. All right, let's do it. Easy. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> nice and easy. And now let's go up there. Let's see if the little ADX can do it. Come on, little boy, come on momentum up the hill we have no idea where we're going <laughs> there's so much fun it's incredibly fun to play around with in places like this it's stupid fun oh, oh, whoopsie doos up the hill we go it may look like an adventure scooter and people may knock it because it just looks like an adventure scooter well it's it's not all looks you can actually even sit up on it and really really start pushing it and you end up in a place like this overlooking the city and enjoying a beautiful afternoon 
after work so let's wrap this video up the little ADX 125 from sim a small well-built top of the range 125cc scooter from sim that says it's an adventure scooter and somehow it actually is there are a lot of things on it that make it an adventure scooter like the mud protectors for the front fork so you can take it out mudding and uh, not get mud in your fork steels like the 15 liter fuel tank like all the plastic cladding over here to protect all of the electronics for when you take it through mud through sand through dust through water river crossings everything is protected here because of all of this plastic cladding all of the fairings that are solidly mounted to the chassis and do not flex do not rattle you don't hear them the off-road bias tires from Kenda which actually do a very good job off-roading the really solid grab handles here which on road trips you can use to mount your luggage to plus I'm sure GV will make a proper rack mount for the rear easily to mount a bigger windscreen because we just have four mounting solid mounts so you can easily put a bigger windscreen on a lot of leg room the transmission which is geared for highway riding this thing is made for adventures this thing is made for idiots like me they like to take a little 12 horsepower scooter to the, to the end of the world and back and with that thought I'm gonna enjoy this a little bit more and I'll catch you guys in the next video where we really push the ADX 125 to its limits until next time guys take care out there and ride safe goodbye <laughs>